Hello and welcome back to Ebenezer. We have a great show in store for you. Coming up, we have a Bible story where Jesus talks about what it means to follow him. And we have a craft where we make a footstep follow chart. But before we get into any of that, it's time for a song. And it's called We Will Follow by Michael Tinker. Do sing along. What a great song! Now it's time for our Bible story, where Jesus tells us what it means to follow him. As they were walking along the road, a man said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Well, what a great Bible story. Now we're going to see if we can figure out what it means for us. And to do that, we're going to need the help of our feathered friend, Zelda. Let's dive into the passage. Why does Jesus talk about foxes and birds? Well, Jesus talks about these animals to explain to the man the cost of following him. Because he's saying that even these animals like foxes have homes, have places to lay down and rest. But Jesus and his followers, they go from place to place and house to house spreading the good news. They don't have a place to call their own. Jesus is letting him know what he'll be getting into if he follows him. Isn't it mean to not let the man bury his father? It seems a bit harsh, doesn't it? To not even let him go back and bury his dead father. But it's important to see that what's most important is following Jesus. You see, there can be no half measures when following Jesus. We can't say, yes, we'll follow you, but first, or even just but anything. If we follow Jesus, he has to be the first thing in our lives, and we have to obey him with all our hearts and strength and mind. What does Jesus mean about not looking back? Well, you see, when this man asks to go back and say goodbye to his family, he's looking back at his old life. And Jesus is telling us about how important it is that when we become Christians, we change our lives completely, and we don't go back to our old ways, even for a moment. You see, when we become followers of Jesus, we become children of God, and we're expected to act in ways which is good and pleasing to him. 
What does this mean for our lives? This is a great but challenging passage that shows us that there's a lot that we need to work on if we're to follow Jesus properly. There's loads of things that we might be putting in front of Jesus or ahead of him, and it's important that we consider what those might be. If we want, we could take a moment to pray, to think about what it is that we're putting before God, and ask that he will help us put him first instead. There's lots of things in this life that we might put before God, whether it's fame or money, or friendships, or even certain interests which we can uh, consider more important than God, even if we're not consciously doing it. Uh, but it's important that we learn to put Jesus first in everything. What are we going to learn about next time? Next time, Jesus sends out 72 people to do his work. Let's see what happens next time. Now it's time for the memory verse. Today's memory verse is from Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. And it's Paul saying this. I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I might gain Christ. So let's say that again. I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. Now it's time for the craft. Today, we're making a special footstep chart. For today's craft, you will need some plain white paper, some colored paper. If you don't have any, you can use white paper and color in a cool pattern on it. Some colored pencils, some scissors. Remember to always be careful with scissors and ask an adult for help if you need. A glue stick. And finally, a marker pen. Now let's get cracking with the craft. This first bit can be a bit tricky. Take your plain paper and put it on the floor. Then draw around your feet with a marker pen. It can be difficult to do your own feet, so I'm drawing around my wife's feet instead. When you've got the outlines of your feet, it's time to cut them out. Remember, scissors can be sharp, so be careful and ask an adult for help if you need. Then take your coloured paper and your glue stick and stick down your feet onto your coloured paper so that it looks like natural footprints. Once you've done that, take your marker pen and split your right foot up into seven sections. Label each section Monday through Sunday. This will be our chart. Every day that we manage to follow our plan, we can colour in that part of the foot. Now it's time to write down what we plan to do. This is a chart to help us follow God, so let's write some things in our left foot that will help us follow God more. First I'm going to write, pray to God every day, then read a psalm from my Bible every day, and don't say mean things to anyone all day. These are just examples. You can write whatever you like, anything you think will help you to follow God. Let's give it a title at the top, my footstep follow chart, because we want to follow in Jesus' footsteps. Every day that you successfully follow your plan, take a coloured pencil and colour in that day of the foot. Hopefully you'll end up with a really colourful foot by the end of the week. What a great craft! Do send through any pictures or questions to the email in the description below. But for now, it's time for a song, and it's called The Word of the Lord Medley by John Hardwick. Do sing along! Take a look 
Take a look at the world's best-selling book. The W-O-R-D, the word of the Lord, lasts eternally like a light, helps us to see, it's the B-I-B-L-E. Eternally, like a light, helps us to see it's the B I B L E. So take a look, take a look at the world's best selling book. Take a look, take a look at the world's best selling book. Take a look at the world's best selling book. Take a look, take a look at the world's best selling book. The W O R D, the word of the Lord, lasts eternally like a light, helps us to see it's the B I B L E. The W O R D, the word of the Lord, lasts eternally. Like a light helps us to see it's the B-I-B-L-E So take a look, take a look at the world's best selling book Take a look, take a look at the world's best selling book Take a look at the world's best selling book. Take a look, take a look at the world's best selling book. The W-O-R-D, the word of the Lord, lasts eternally like a light, helps us to see it's the B-I-B-L-E. The W-O-R-D, the word of the Lord, lasts eternally like a light helps us to see it's the B-I-B-L-E last eternally We're running out of time now so we're going to end in a short prayer If you'd like to make it yours please join in with the Amen at the end Lord thank you that we have the opportunity to follow you and commit our lives to you Help us to have strength and courage that comes from you to give up the things that we are putting in front of you. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all we've got time for. Do tune in next time when Jesus sends out 72 people. But for now, that's bye from me, and it's bye from Zelda. And we'll see you in the next video.